10 and start 0-3 with all three losses coming to unranked opponents. So when you look at this Florida State team then, Danny, what's the problem? What's the main problem for you? There's a laundry list of problems. Yes. Um, they haven't lived up to the hype, right? Because this was a defensive line that people thought was the best in the country. It was an offensive line which had a ton of veterans. And then it was a quarterback that was a guy that was brought in the transfer portal and DJ Uyungle, who I just think Florida State missed on. I think they thought they could put him in a position to succeed because they would have a dominant defense, a run game to support him, and then he could play that role of game manager. The way things have unfolded, he's been exposed as somebody who cannot put the team on his shoulders. And that's been a huge problem for Florida State, so much so where I do think Mike Novell will really have to consider making a QB change, which is tough because you're only three games into the season. You paid DJU a lot of money to be this quarterback for your school. But at some point, you cannot worry so much about his confidence level that you are afraid to bench him and take him out of the game. You just might have to make a decision to go in a different direction to see what it looks like and see if it provides the team a spark. 16 of 30 today for 201 yards and the one interception. Were you surprised that Norvell maybe didn't turn to Glenn today? I did. I thought at halftime, because it was so bad in the first half, it was so conservative, it was very much... There was this horizontal pass game. They didn't try to stretch the field vertically, and it looked like they were trying to protect DJ and not expose him to tougher throws where he could have an interception or, you know, you just wanted to protect him. And it wasn't working, and I thought there would be a chance for Brock Glenn to come in and he could spark the offense. He's a better runner. The offensive line has struggled to protect DJ because he's been very much a statue in the pocket. Instead, I always defer to the coaches. Like, they see practice. They see what's unfolding. And Brock Glenn was not great last year he was worse than DJU has been in the ACC championship game and the Orange Bowl but at some point I wonder what the locker room thinks and that's truly what I don't know is going on there in Tallahassee but I would imagine the defense is tired of being on the field the whole entire game watching three and outs and watching mistakes being made on the offensive side of the ball that you just try to shake things up a little bit because what's working right now the formula is clearly failing. Cardale Jones said earlier that you know one of the things that Florida State just doesn't realize is going into this game is that it's all it was all still in front of them. Mm -hmm. The college football playoff they have the opportunity to go and win the ACC and and make the college football playoff. Now they're a three loss team. Yeah, I mean, and I was even talking to Cardell before this, and he's like, hey, you guys can still do it. You know, like, <laughs> you can't even think about that right now. You've got to get ready to go for your next opponent. And this is where, you know, I, I know some coaches may use different motivational tactics and try to sell that. They do have Miami left on the schedule. They still have Clemson. They still have a lot of ACC games that they potentially could win. They have to get ready for Cal. Like, that's the next opponent on the schedule. Be ready. It is a conference game. But they have so many issues to iron out. They can't even be discussing playoffs because it would make them look foolish. They have to worry about beating one opponent before they can start worrying about the playoffs. FSU coming into this had won nine of the last ten meetings between the two. The other one was a tie and this was their first meeting since 1990 but now when you look at Memphis 3-0 and in the American I mean are, are, are we talking enough about this Memphis team no they were they're already they were in that conversation for breath best group of five team yeah. which getting an access to the playoff this year there will be a battle a resume battle who has the best wins and we've already seen Northern Illinois Northern Illinois from the Mac beat Notre Dame we saw UNLV beat Kansas and this is Memphis beating a power four opponent in Florida State what I wonder for Memphis is how does this win look at the end of the season? Because right now it looks like an average win. They almost have to root for Florida State to get things fixed so that it looks better. Either way, Memphis, if they win the American, which I do think is probably the strongest group of five conference, and they have this win in Tallahassee, I think it probably does clinch them as the best group of five team. Remember, Boise State had an opportunity to beat Oregon, came up short, and Oregon might be a better team, but they still lost that game, and I don't know if the Mountain West carries as much weight as the American. The Memphis, by the way, have won six straight road games, and uh, they've won 10 of the last 11, uh, sorry, 11 of the last 12 versus non-conference opponents when you include this game today and scoring 20 or more points in 30 straight games. It's the longest active streak uh, in college football. Big win today over Florida State, 20 to 12. They're going to be talking about this uh, probably for the duration of the week. Do we here have on the to? Cover three. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Danny, you know they're not going to let you off the hook. <laughs> Chip, Tom, and Bud are not going to let you off the hook. You're off the nope. hook tonight for the reaction show. We know that. It's past your bedtime. So uh, the reaction show is coming up uh, later tonight. The Cover 3 podcast. This is the best college football podcast out there. And I'm not just saying that because it actually is. So download and follow wherever you get your podcasts or scan that QR code to listen to the latest episode right now. 
Now, in terms of Florida State, let's get some reaction here. Mike Norvell talking to the media after the game. Um, well, the week, you know, the, the preseason, offseason, you know, things that are criti critically important to being successful is not, are not showing up, um, you know, as, as consistent as we need them to be. Um, obviously, offensively today, um, you know, Pretty easy to see. You know, it was a very disappointing performance. Um, you know, able to or able to really ever get uh, you know, much going. Uh, your second half, we were able to move the ball, but uh, you had a couple explosive plays. Um, you know, but still had way, you know too many negatives. Uh, you know, they did a good job in the first half with some of the pressure packages, and we had you know. Couple turnovers, um, you know, missed opportunities, um, you know, drop balls, you know, just m mistakes that, that don't allow to um, to play winning football. And uh, we came out, you know, third quarter, you know, be able to hit, hit a big play, get down, score a touchdown, wherever, move the ball, got in the red zone, and you know, need to be able to finish. Um, you know, had a, had a mistake, you know, there inside the five that um, that, hurt, that hurt us, and um, you know, obviously. Um, you know, not be able to, to finish there at the end. And, um, you know, I thought the defense had, had good moments. You know, still, uh, you know, too many times we're, we're not getting off the field in, in third down situations. We had uh, some, some mistakes. We had some new guys that, you know, really uh, got, you know, tested today just with our with our depth. We had guys that went down, um, you know, on both sides of the ball. We, you know, we lost Darius Washington in pregame. So, uh, you know, forced uh, some moving pieces there, um, you know, there. Um, you know, within the offensive line, you know, had some linebackers go down. Um, obviously, um, you know, opportunities for guys to, to rise up and, and, you know, seize the moment. And, uh, you know, some guys did. And then, you know, obviously some guys, we, you know, obviously got to make sure that uh, we're doing all the things in our preparation to allow us to go out there and, and play to the level that we're capable of playing. And, uh, you know, I, I do believe that um, we're a much better team than what we're showing. So, uh, you know, obviously it still comes down to, to me being able to get that out of these guys. And for that to show up you're, you're, you're on game day. And um, that's, you know, I'm um, you know, just a, a disappointed that I've not been able to get, get more out of what I believe this team is. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to work at it. Um, you know, I, I believe in, in who we have. I believe in, in what they can do. And uh, you know, but we got to be able to transition. What what you know the, the positive things that we see out there on the practice field has got to come. It's got to be able to translate. You know, uh, on, on on the game day. And um, you know, obviously that's going to be a lot of evaluation, uh, a continued evaluation coming off a of bye week. You know, that's what we did, and I thought we would have a much better performance uh, than what we did here here today. Um, you know, I, I think all three phases had uh, had moments of just you know not not looking like and not playing like the the way that we're capable of. So, good questions. All right, first one will be Chris Nee, second row here, right? Mike, how do you do things differently or approach things differently to get the results that you expect from the practice that you're not getting translating to games well, right mean, now? You know, it's. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for a while, and uh, you know it's. Um, you know, there's there's times where you 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 see guys you know playing and or or you know as we talked you know pressing you know obviously trying to to do you know too much uh, we try to simplify communication try to um, you know make sure that uh, you were doing things that that guys have shown you know throughout throughout that work to to you know be consistent and uh, to be able to translate um, you know and that's you will continue to evaluate that and you know I. I Definitely know what it takes to win games. I know what it takes to uh, uh, for for a team to go out there and, and be able to to execute and play at a high level. And uh, you know we all have to do a better job of um, you know we'll, of what we're doing you know throughout the course of the week. And you know I have to challenge the players, challenge the coaches, right? Because we can't continue to to come into games and then see things that that absolutely are not a part of, of what we and who we are, you know, show up. And, uh, you know, I, so we all have to prepare better. And we all got to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, we get to game day, that it, it is our best foot forward. And, you know, these guys, I mean, they haven't stopped working. I mean, I, I, I mean you guys are at practice. I mean, it's, you know, they, they, they do work. You know, obviously the the uh, the transit the transition to to the game day. Um, you know, we've got to we got to do a better job of making sure that you know whether it's the communication, whether it's the uh, the understanding, the reaction, and then you know just being confident in the moment and go making the play. I mean, I that you know, it shows up with you know with missed opportunities um, and you know that 
then obviously we get we have to be we have to be better in that situation. We'll stay over there for our you guys, obviously, you mentioned the drop passes, um, but to have 67 yards in the in a half, um, have you ever had an offense that struggled like this to, to do much of anything? Um, let's say, have I ever? Um, sure, probably some, probably some point. Um, you know, but yeah, it wasn't. I mean, obviously, we did not. You know, you turn the ball over a couple times. You, I mean, the turnovers matter. You turn the ball over on the second play of the game. Um, that's a that's a big play. We have the interception. Um, you got pressure. Arm got hit. You know, had a, had an opportunity on the plate, um, but you know when you have those things and you have you know a couple big drops and and moments, I mean that kills drives pretty quick. And uh, you know we we thought we did a good job coming out in the third quarter and you know being able to hit the explosive play. I thought we moved the ball there in the second half, uh, but we got to finish drives and we got to eliminate you know eliminate mistakes that, that put us in. Uh, um, you know, challenging situations because of TFLs, because of uh, pressures, um, and you know, I mean, obviously, it's it, like I said, it's all of us. So, thanks for being Jordan in the middle. Coach, it's clear to hear the disappointment in your voice. I'm just wondering your message to the team uh, at halftime when you guys were down 10 points, and also your message to the team uh, after the game right now. Yeah, you know, just to, you know, at halftime, just you, you have to go play the, you have to go play the next play, and you know, you get caught up, you know, looking at a scoreboard, you get caught up on, you know, I mean, there was no, there's no secret. The offense you know, struggled in the first half. Um, but, you know, even with that, there's games where that, you know, one side of a ball might struggle and, you know, we've got to have each other's back and we got to make sure that we're responding and controlling the things that we can control um, you know, in those situations. And, you know, that's, that was my message to them is that, you know, it didn't matter offense, defense, especially we needed, we need to be able to go out there. We've got to have the game.
one blow. 